Good morning. Welcome to Morning Special. 여러분 안녕하세요. 6월 10일 월요일 Morning Special. 저는 최수진입니다. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
So, of course, we're looking at a number of things that need to happen before that ship can be hoisted or raised out of the water. And one of the things, of course, first that must happen is that the ship must be secured. And to do that, they are looking at wrapping very thick, heavy, what some agencies are calling wires. Mm. Uh, I might call them cables, but in any case, very heavy pieces of metal that will then enable the shift to be lifted up by crane. Uh, of course, the other thing that needs to happen as well is that the contents of the ship, mm. uh, be those whatever they may be, also need to be secured so that in raising the ship, the contents don't get jostled and then discharged or dislodged from the ship. 네, 그렇습니다. 단유부강 유람선 참사가 있은 지 이제 거진 한 2주 정도가 됐습니다. 있습니다. 그래서 현지 시간으로 10일 헝가리 당국은요 침몰한 선체를 와이어로 붙드는 작업을 마무리하고 오늘이나 내일 현지 시간 10일 또는 11일 인양에 나설 것으로 보인다 이렇게 얘기를 했거든요 이 인양을 영어로 salvage라고 하죠 네 그렇지만 이제 우리 측에서는 현지 시간 10일 정도면 가능하지 않겠느냐 라고 하지만 헝가리 측에서는 그래도 한 11일에 이뤄질 수도 있다 또 이렇게 얘기를 하고 있네요 of course, there's also been much discussion of the weather and particularly related to the water levels, that is both mm. the height of the water as well as the speed of the current, and they are waiting, the authorities there, the officials there are waiting for both of those things to reach the optimal point to raise that boat. Uh, the crane that will do the actual hoisting or raising has been in place now for some time, right. but it's just been a matter of getting these wires or cables attached to the ship, getting all of the openings on the ship sealed again so those contents yeah. don't get dislodged. Uh, when it does come time to raise the ship, it's said to take uh, about four hours to actually bring it out of the water. 네, 그렇습니다. 그네 개의 와이어가 있는데요. 그네 번째 와이어를 묶는 작업이 현지 시간 10일 이뤄진다고 합니다. 어, 지난달 29일 밤에 이 사고가 발생을 했죠. 어, 그 크루즈선 바이킹 시긴호 이제 들이받쳐서 어, 머르기트 다리에 침몰한 음, 허블레아니 호 사고 그 직후 이제 한국 관광객 일곱 명이 구조가 됐고 현재까지는 한국인 열아홉 명 그리고 헝가리인 선원 한 명이 숨진 채 발견이 됐습니다. 어, 여전히 실종 상태인 어, 인원은 한국인 일곱 명 그리고 헝가리인 선장 한 명입니다. Let's go over to our next headline. Headline number two. Thousands of people have marched in Venice to demand that cruise ships be camped out of the Italian city's lagoon. 수천 명의 베네치아 시민들이 대형 선박의 베네치아 운하 통행 금지를 촉구했습니다. So there has been a lot of discussion about this actually for quite some time now, but mm -hmm. these discussions seem to be somewhat enhanced by a recent accident there where a, a cruise ship struck a much smaller boat in a canal leading into Venice. That particular crash was said to have injured five people, including two Australians and a New Zealander. Mm -hmm. In response now, we do have people that have been marching around shouting out ships out of the lagoon, mm -hmm. no big ships. They've also been carrying banners saying the same. Uh, and this, as I said, has been going on for some time, these discussions, these protests, but now they do seem to be uh, accelerating because of this recent incident. 네, 그렇습니다. 최근 베네치아 운하에서 일어난 이 대형 크루즈선과의 추돌 사고를 계기로 대형 선박의 베네치아 운하 운항을 어, 금지해라. 이런 논란이 가열되고 있습니다. 베네치아 주민 수천 명이 그래서 현지 시간 8일 베네치아 도심을 행진했는데요. 어, 외신에 의하면 한 3천 명 정도가 행진을 했다. 이렇게 밝히고 있습니다. Yeah, the city itself, of course, is home to many, many tourists, and getting those tourists to the city obviously is one of the issues. And uh, there has been, as of I think it was February, a so-called entrance fee of what currently stands at three euros on so-called day trippers. Those are people who go in just for the day, mm. but then leave on that same day. That money being used to help pay for the upkeep of the city. And it's said that next year, 2020, that uh, entrance fee will rise to between six and 10 euros, so at the very low point, doubling in fact, uh, depending on of course low or high season. 네, 어, 이탈리아 정부가 요 2013년에 어, 9만 6천 톤급 이상의 대형 선박의 주데카 운하를 금지하는 법안을 어, 제정한 적이 있습니다. 그래서 이제 관련된 법안인데요. 이 법안이 이후에 철회된 바 있습니다. Let's go on to our next headline. Headline number three. 
Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets in Hong Kong against a controversial extradition law. Hong Kong 정부가 추진 중인 범죄인 인도 법안에 반대하는 대규모 시위가 벌어졌습니다. And as a matter of fact, you and I have reported on this particular law some weeks ago when sure. it was sort sort of first being discussed, but now we are seeing uh, a pushback against that, and the pushback is rather large, with hundreds of thousands of people, mm. depending on if you listen to the uh, organizers' estimates or the police. Estimates because those, as they often do, differ. Mm. How and, do and, they differ? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the organizers are actually saying up to a million people mm. uh, in the uh, streets protesting, and I think the police were putting that number at slightly less than 300,000, right. so roughly about three, 3.5 times of different. Uh, in any case, one thing that most people do agree on that this is said to be the largest uh, protest, public protest there since the 2014 umbrella movement. Yeah. 어, 지금 주최 측에서는 어, 100만 명 이상이 이 시위에 참여했다. 이렇게 밝히고 있고요. 홍콩 경찰은 그것보다는 이제 적은 숫자지만 그래도 어, 뭐 CNN에 의하면은 뭐 24만 명, 또 다른 외신에 의하면은 뭐 30만 명그 정도로 지금 보고 있는 것 같습니다. 그러나 이제 약간 숫자의 차이는 있습니다만 그래도 대규모 시위고요. 어떤 내용인가요? What's it about? Well, exactly right. That's the very important question here. The changes being proposed are said to allow for extradition requests. So that's when one country or one region says, hey, mm. there is a criminal or suspected criminal in your region. We want to bring that person to our region to have them put on trial. That is an extradition request. Mm -hmm. Now, the, those will be allowed from mainland China, Taiwan, and Macau. Again, going back to the reason for this, it sort of came about after a 19-year-old Hong Kong man allegedly murdered his 20-year-old and pregnant girlfriend while on holiday in Taiwan, and of course that was much of the impetus or catalyst for this extradition law. 네 이번 시위는요 중국 본토로 범죄인을 송환할 수 있도록 허용하는 범죄인 인도 법안입니다. 이게 12일 날 홍콩에서 상정될 예정이거든요. 그래서 이것을 어, 상정시키지 말아라. 어, 이 법은 중국을 위한 법이다라고 이제 시위자들이 밝히고 어, 그렇게 주장을 하고 있는데요. 이 법안이 통과가 되면은 어, 중국 정부에 대해서 어, 반대 얘기를 하는 그 반체제 인사라든지 아니면 인권 운동가들을 중국 본토로 송환하는데 좀 악용이 될수 있다라는 주장입니다. And I think it's probably also worth pointing out that Hong Kong does already have extradition agreements with several countries, I believe mm. up to 20 countries, including the UK and the US and about 17 or 18 others. So it's not as if this is the only extradition treaty being looked at. However, given that it's with China, right. the circumstances are somewhat different. 네, 그렇게 이렇게 중국으로 다시 송환이 될 경우에는 좀 공평한, 공정한 심사, 심판이라든지 이런 게 이루어지기 힘들다라고 시위자들은 보고 있는 것이고요. 1997년 영국이 중국에 반환한 홍콩은요. 2047년까지 독립적인 사법권이 보장돼 있습니다. Let's go on to our next headline. Headline number four. The U.S. and Mexico reached an agreement on immigration policy. 미국과 멕시코가 불법 이민 관련 협상을 타결했습니다. So this uh, agreement sort of comes about because of President Trump's talk, or at least tweets, or both, of tariffs that mm. would have been placed on all imported goods from Mexico. Uh, according to reports, those tariffs would have started at 5%, but could have been risen at regular intervals to reach as high as 25%. Uh, thankfully, that has, for the time being, been avoided, as last week, uh, Mexican officials met with U.S. officials to negotiate a deal that will, as we say, hopefully get rid of those tariffs. Uh, the talks did lead to an agreement with both sides offering concessions, meaning right. that both sides sort of gave up a little bit of something. 네, 이번에 타결된 협상에서 미국은 멕시코산 수입품에 부과하려던 5% 관세 계획을 철회하기로 했고요. 대신에 멕시코는 남쪽 국경의 경비를 강화하고 미국에 망명을 신청한 이민자들을 임시 수용하는 조치를 약속했습니다. So if we look at what sort of concessions were offered from the Mexican side, Mexico, Mexico agreed to station up to 6,000 of its National Guard troops around the country 
to assist with current immigration control efforts. The majority of those 6,000 troops would be deployed at the border uh, that it shares, that the country shares with Guatemala. This comes to us by way of the Wall Street Journal. On the other side, the U.S. has agreed to speed up processing of asylum claims. Currently, those processes can take uh, between six months to even several years. Mm. So we're looking at a speeding up of that as well. And I understand the blocking of this tariff going up has made the Mexican uh, head of state very popular. It has indeed, as well as uh, President Trump. It's also made him quite happy. He tweeted out in response to the agreement that is President Trump saying, everyone very excited about the new deal with Mexico. 네, 이 관세 폭탄을 막은 안드레스 마누엘 로페스 오브라도르, 멕시코 대통령의 인기도 높아졌고요. 미국 측에서도 환영하는 분위기입니다. All right, well, let's go on to our next headline. Headline number five. Employment rates in the EU and the Eurozone in the first quarter rose to a new record high. 올해 1분기 EU와 Eurozone의 고용 수준이 역대 최고치를 기록한 것으로 나타났습니다. So we are talking about employment rates here. That is the number of people working or the percentage of people working. Right. And both of those have risen to new record highs. Specifically, if we look at the rate of job increases, the highest rate of job increases were in industry, information and communication services, and as well as the real estate sector. Mm. Can we look at this state by state? Uh, yes, we do have some, when you say state by state, of course, uh, EU members, yes, yes indeed. Yes. Uh, we have data available for several of those. In Hungary, there was a 1% increase. In Spain, a 0.7% increase, as well as Greece. Greece, Lithu Lithuania, and the Netherlands all increasing 0.6%. Uh, the Again, this is some of the highest growth compared with the previous quarter. There were, however, some decreases, at mm. least in a few of the EU states. Uh, one in Estonia down 0.4%, and uh, Finland and Sweden had no change at all at 0.0% at growth. Ah, 그렇군요. EU 회원국 가운데 이제 올해 1분기에 직전 분기 대비 고용률이 가장 많이 상승한 나라는 헝가리. 상징률은 1%였고요. 그 다음에 스페인, 그리고 그리스, 리투아니아, 네덜란드 각각 0.6%의 상승률을 보였습니다. Um, of course, this is, as you said, a big increase. And according to Eurostat, 통계기구, EU 통계기구, Eurostat에 따르면요. 올해 1분기와, 1분기 이유와 또 유로존의 고용률이 직전 분기 작년 4분기보다 각각 0.3% 상승한 것이다 하면서 역대 가장 높은 고용 수준이다라고 밝혔습니다. And let's check our final headline. Headline number six. Amid a faltering economy, the Zimbabwean government announced that it plans to introduce a new currency by the end of the year. 경제난을 겪고 있는 남아프리카 짐바브웨가 새로운 국가 화폐를 도입하겠다고 밝혔습니다. So in Zimbabwe, there has been something known as a local electronic so-called RTGS dollars that were introduced in February. Uh, those, of course, have also been uh, losing their value, leading to talk of introducing a another new currency. Uh, Zimbabwe's economy has been more or less in ruins since hyperinflation there peaked at 500 billion percent, hmm. of course, wiping out many, many people's savings and driving up the cost of living uh, almost to unfathomable amounts. 네, 현지 시간 8일 외신에 따르면요, 뭐 로이터 통신, DPA 통신 등등 외신에 따르면은 어, 음란가, 음란가과 대통령 이 연설을 통해서 이렇게 얘기를 했다고 합니다. 우리는 국가의 고유한 화폐를 가져야 한다. 어, 우리에게 고유한 화폐가 없기 때문에 지금 이렇게 물가 급등을 겪고 있는 것이다. 이렇게 밝혔는데요. 어, 사실 이제 미국 달러가 좀 지배적인 통화로 여기서는 자리 잡아왔죠. Yeah, there had been in the past some correlation between the U.S. dollar and the currency there in Zimbabwe. However, discussing the new currency, whatever it may be, the president did say two things about it. The president there in Zimbabwe, of course, he said first, there's been no official timeline for it. He said simply that people will be informed when it happens. Mm -hmm. He did also say that once it is introduced, it will be impossible to use foreign currency for local transactions. 네, 여러 가지 이렇게 물가 급증으로 인한 시위들도 벌어지고 있는 가운데 아, 대통령은 연말까지 이새 화폐가 도입될 것이다 이렇게 밝혔습니다. Well, those are the headlines for this morning. Walter 선생님, could you remind our listeners of the quiz? It would be my pleasure to do so. Today's quiz. We use this device to look at the stars. Is that number one, a telescope, 
Or number two, a submarine. Hmm. We all live. Yeah, especially <laughs> if it's a yellow submarine. one, right? <laughs> 짧은 문자 50원, 긴 문자 100원에 샵 #1045로 보내주세요. 방금 노래는 오다핀트입니다. <laughs> yes. 짧은 게, 아 반디 게시판이나 카카오톡 플러스 무료로 이용 가능하고요. 노래 듣고 와서 뉴스 포커스 살펴보겠습니다. This is Terry Jacks, Seasons in the Sun.